All right, guys, today we're going to learn how to uh, texture your apple, something like this. Um, so first off, do a file new, Unreal Engine 4, 4096. We're going to choose the file SM Apple. Import it. Save that other one. All right, so we left. we start with something like this. So first off, um, let's get some pictures of apples. In Apple, otherwise you just get Apple logos. And you can find one that you would like to try to recreate. I was kind of going with something like this, something kind of generic. I don't know, if you want to go with something a little bit richer with the reds, you can. This one just has a lot of dots on it. Um, that's a nice one. I'll go with that for now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a what's called a fill layer. And this fill layer means whatever you change on it, it's going to change the entire image. So if we start with a base color of bright red, and that looks probably pretty close right there. I think that's just solid red. I mean, it might. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. And then as far as the reflection, you know, we want to try to get this uh, roughness to be similar to what we see here. I would say maybe a little bit shinier. You don't want to go too far. Maybe just a little shinier. And obviously there's no metalness. If you start to go metallic, you'll see it starts to look pretty weird. Um, there's no metallic. So we can actually just turn metal off and normals and height for now. So that's our base apple. Uh, it's all right. Maybe just a little bit darker. If you want to go with a green apple, go with a green apple. That's fine with me. And you, I don't know, let's take a look at like this one. You'll notice that it's got a lot of these kind of stripey things that come down. Um, this one actually seems a little less rough. Let's go with that for now. So we're going to now just add some, um, we're not going to worry about the stem for now, let's just ignore that. Uh, but we're going to create a new layer, and this is going to just be a, an actual layer, not a fill layer. So I'm going to call this layer, um, painting colors, I don't know, highlights. And I don't need this layer. So again, that was a uh, layer, not a fill layer. So on the highlights layer, we don't, we don't want to worry about color. I'm sorry, we don't want to worry about height, roughness, metal, or normal. We're only going to be worrying about color right now. So let's take a look. We're going to get a little bit of yellow or green or orange. Let's find a color that's kind of similar to that. Um, maybe something in this range. Alright, so now we're going to go to our brushes and we're going to get a brush that might kind of resemble something like that. There's uh, cotton, there's cement, there's chalk, there's all sorts of things. I saw the guy use cotton, so maybe let's do that. Um, you can change the spacing. No, that's not going to work. Yeah, I don't really like the cotton. Let's try dirt. That's probably better. Change that spacing. A little something like that. It's not bad. And of course, we got to pull our flow down to almost nothing. Yeah, a little higher. And you can play with the sides, the size as well. Now, if, if you decide to go with something else, that's totally fine. But um, the bigger you make it, the bigger the bumps are, which can kind of look weird. But if you go too small, it's going to be very tedious. So you decide how much you want to go. I would say a flow of somewhere very, very low. Um, and this is kind of painstaking work. It's going to take you a few minutes to just go around and make sure you get the top parts and the bottom. And just kind of brush all that in. If you want to, or I don't know, you don't definitely don't want it to be solid red. That's gonna look weird. 
Shift right click to move the light. So you're going to bring the light along, along with you as you rotate. And then um, Alt left click to rotate the object. Shift right click to rotate the light. Alt left click to rotate the object. You can also do it on here if this is easier. And I'm going to go a little bigger. You can also change this to just color so you can only worry about that one thing. Which actually makes a ton of sense right now for the sake of this. Cool. Uh, probably way overdid that, so let's take a look where we're at. I don't know. I mean, it, it looks something like this. Those strokes tend to be a little bit more up and down, so you could like... I wonder if you could squish it. You can in Photoshop. I guess you can't here. You can kind of rotate it, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay, and then I, I actually went through and I, I went back with some bright red in places where I felt like it was too much. Just kind of brought it back. You could also use an eraser to do that or, or whatever. Just eye it. But it's pretty cool how with so little effort we were able to get something that is already really resembling an actual apple. And again, if you want to go green, do it. If you want to go darker, do it. But one thing that these apples all have in common is they have white bumps all over them. So that's our next challenge. So, on the same layer, we'll switch to white. And with a very low flow, we'll try a brush that has a bunch of dots. The one that says dots probably will do. So let's see what this looks like when we spread it out. Okay, so obviously the spacing is going to need to be way up. And unfortunately, instead of just like when you space it, instead of spacing the individual dots, it spaces the um, the whole like patch of dots, which isn't really what we want. So maybe we'd be better off with just the basic soft brush with a lot of spacing. Only problem there is... It Oh, here we can put some size jitter on it. That would be good. Yeah, and then we'll throw some uh, position jitter. Really pull that spacing up. Let's see how that looks. And... Uh, the flow jitter needs to be down. English position jitter needs to be up. Size jitter up a little bit. I guess that would work. I don't know. That's a pretty big commitment to have to. Um, and they're they're like really there. Well, let's pull the flow down to a low number and see how that turns out. I don't know. That seems like a lot of manual work. Yeah, that's, that looks kind of fake. Ankle jitter. Flow jitter, size, position jitter. Yeah, it's just it's just going too much all over the place. Um, I'm gonna go back to dots. What's dots erase look like? Yeah, back to dots. Nice big size. Big, big, big size. Bigger size. And spacing. And then just pull that flow down to like 10%. I guess that works. They are pretty big and pretty randomly spaced. It looks kind of funky, but whatever. It's fine. If you can think of a better way to do it, please do, and you can teach the class. Up at the top of the apple, you'll notice that it does tend to get a little lighter. So let's go back to that color we had earlier. Let's just switch back to a dirt brush. And then... I'm going to throw a bit of, uh, pull that flow way down. Just take a few minutes to kind of get that to blend off. It looks kind of cool when you do that. Let me go a little greener. And what I've noticed when I look at apples is it kind of tends to 
flow um, along the lines of the apple, the kind of the star areas, the recesses. So I kind of went inside those spots a little bit, the five bumpy places, and just kind of followed them that way. Cool. I like it. All right, now let's make a new layer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, create uh, some normals that are going to kind of distort the light a little bit. Because if we look at this, an apple is going to have the reflections are not really perfectly straight. They're kind of bumpy. And we need to just have a little bit of that on here. So, um, by the way, I'm doing sh left click and alt right now to get that rotated. Uh, so I'm going to change this to normals on this normals layer. And I'm going to choose the normals as zombie skin right there. And what's weird is it defaults to diffuse. You need to change it back to normal. I don't know why it does that. Otherwise this won't work. So again, normal on this little section right here, click normal uniform color, type in zombie. Change that to normal. And what's going to happen now is when we paint it's taking zombie skin normals and using it to bend the light. So we could pick, I don't know, basic brush. It look not good at all. Let's try cotton. Now, I'm going to go back with uh, really soft. Artistic. Maybe just a basic soft. Yeah, that'll work. Nice and big. Maybe not too big. Hard part about this is it's hard to see. And I found that by turning this on normal view, you can make sure you're getting it all. But it's weird. I don't think it's supposed to look like I think it's actually supposed to show you the normal map. And it's just showing me where I have normal. So I think this might just be a video card issue. I know we keep getting that warning. So, But anyway. Um, this will ensure that you have every spot hit. And now when I look at the apple, it just has a little bit of nice bumpiness to it. And if you felt like this was too much, like maybe you overdid it, you could even take this opacity on this layer and just pull it down to a smaller amount. And I'm seeing as I do that that it's not doing a, dang, a darn thing, which means either there's something going on with my graphics or I just don't understand this program as much as I thought I did. So, either way. Uh, <laughs> can you change this to pass through? Huh, I don't know why it's doing that. Oh well. We'll have a slightly bumpy apple. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, now that I go back and compare it, it does feel a little too glossy, so I can go back to this fill layer. Let me change that back to normal. And I'm going to just pull that down just a smidge. That looks to me like pretty close to that type of reflection. And then let's just focus on the stem. Um, I didn't really too much worry about the bottom part. Probably should have. I don't want to keep jumping around you guys, but uh, get that little bit of brown in there as well. Dark. Cool. Kind of hard to see, but yeah, something. So the stem, obviously everything we've been doing kind of is messing with the stem. So you could go to your eraser and make sure it's on a tangent UV, just erase. Those are the zombie marks. And then on the highlights, erase that. And on this one, we're going to add a white layer mask. And we'll just use black to hide, oops, to hide the red on this part. Oops, i got to switch to black. Remember, I'm using the um, polygon fill button. So now there's nothing on there. It's just blank. So I'm going to create a 
actually I'll just drag it. I'm going to go to materials and I'm going to look up wood. I think I'm going to go with walnut. Let's see what that looks like. And just drag it on there. And what I'm really looking at is just how it impacts this. Uh, I do need to rotate it so that it goes along with the grain of that. That looks pretty good. I guess. I don't know. Um, and I'm going to pull the roughness way up so it doesn't look polished at all. That's not bad. You could paint it yourself. Same method we did before, but I'm just taking the easy way out. Uh, add your black layer mask to it. We'll put polygon fill on white and add it to just this section. And then if we look at an actual stem, you'll see that it's got some green in it. Oops. So I'll come in with a new layer. Get a little bit of green on there. Where am I? Oh yeah, just oh, I have to get back to my paintbrush. And might be easier just to do it here. Get that flow down. Let's just. Um, way down flow. I don't know. I guess that works, whatever. That looks pretty horrible. I tried. Give me a break, guys. Uh, that part may be darker. I don't know why, it just felt right. And I'm going to lighten these other parts a little bit. Okay. I don't know, I don't, I don't think I should have done that. <laughs> uh, it's fine. There's our app. So it's, I think it's pretty cool that you can do this with, you know, what looks like this really, really complicated thing to create an apple that looks almost realistic. And you guys now have cracked the code, you know how to do it, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys, what you guys do with this. Um, next thing I want you to do is making sure you have an account with Sketchfab. I want you to file, export, textures. And we're going to change the config to Sketchfab. I don't know what this means. We're going to click Export. And if you see where it's going to put everything, it tells you right there. If you want to change that, you can. But we're not. This is going to go straight to the web. So we click Export. We're going to um, do your login for Sketchfab if you haven't done it yet. Do so now. Because this is going to be like your portfolio for um, going forward. And if you ever want to get a job in anything in the 3D, video game, movie, art industry, this is going to go on your portfolio. Bad Sketchfab authentication. I now remember my password. There we go. And I'm going to say Apple 2 because I've already created an Apple. Description. It's an apple. Or is it, it apostrophe s? It's a contraction. Okay. Uh, tag apple. Fruit. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Publish. And you're going to click upload. So your work is now going to be seen by the entire world. It's going to take you to Sketchfab. It's going to. If you have not logged in, it's going to ask you to log in. Um. And then it'll take like, I don't know, a while. Oh, I have to wait till 3.30 today because I've been publishing too much stuff. Um, I want to grade it on Sketchfab. So you're going to take the link for this and you're going to copy and paste it on Classroom and submit it. And that's how I'm going to give you your grade. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.